Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Aloha! No, I'm not in the lab, and no, I'm not doing a drive time rant, but I'm uh, actually in my tree house on the big island of Hawaii, hence the aloha, and I just, uh, I'm just watching some TV here, and I thought it's an interesting mix of technology. I'm watching a 34 centimeter CRT TV with VHS cassette recorder in it. I've got a 200 plus channel high definition digital set top box. And as you do in the US, we don't have that in Australia, a couple of hundred channels. And uh, it's coming via a satellite, I think, or maybe even cable, but I think it is satellite. And it's going, I'm getting the composite video output from the high def set top box so it's been down coded to uh, composite NTSC, NTSC never twice the same color that's what it stands for uh, signal format it's composite output into an RF modulator it's RF modulated onto UHF which then goes into this ancient 34 centimeter color TV with VCR it's just incredible the mix of technology and the uh, the just the the different uh, conversions that are involved from filming um, the, when it starts when they actually film the thing to when it's recorded edited saved distributed from one place to another and then finally transmitted and then down converted and, and it actually doesn't look that bad and it's probably gone through dozens and dozens of conversions using what 50 plus year old technology, NTSC, that's the final uh, output format on UHF modulation. I just found that really amazing and I thought I'd share it with you. Technology is a wonderful thing and how it can last so long. It's really amazing. And uh, in case you're wondering about the noises, that's probably the um, uh, nuts or something falling from the tree up here in the tree house falling on the tin roof, which is really quite fun. but. Anyway, enough of that. I thought I'd share that with you and I'll get back to my 200 plus channels here in the big island of Hawaii. And as usual, even with 200 plus channels, you can't find a damn thing to watch. And as interesting as the 24 hour sex toy shopping channel is, well, you know, I just can't find a thing. See ya. Hi, we're at a rather unusual box this time. I'm at the top of... Uh... Telescopes, if you can uh, see them. We've got the Keck uh, observatories and we've got the um, James Clerk Maxwell down there. And there you go. And we're up here watching the gorgeous sunset. There's the Gemini Observatory. They've actually just started to open it up. So the domes, well, it was moving, but uh, now it's still. But you can see the frame of the huge telescope in there. Awesome. Maybe they're letting it acclimatise or something like that, I don't know. But, uh, there's obviously a some sort of um, station for the weather. There's another two telescopes at the top, sorry. James Clerk Maxwell again. And the Kecks. Check it out, this is where we're actually staying for the night and our guest house is just up the top here, it's a and b and what they're doing is they're piping, I thought I'd show you this, they're actually piping in the uh, part of the falls here. As you can see they actually take it a, as a separate tap from the top, it's about a 30 or a 40 metre head 
on that so it's quite sizable and they've got this little homemade generator here and let's go check it out And there it is, as you can see, they've got four uh, turbine little uh, hydro generators there and each one's generating about 30 or 40 amps. Um, oh, sorry, about 20 or 30 amps, but I'm not sure of the voltage. And they actually uh, pipe it out here and they pop it out into the bush just there, just below the water so that it actually uh, filters it out and it stops the um, very high pressure flow going through. So there you go, I just thought I'd show you these lovely falls. Hi, I'm back from Hawaii, I'm in the lab, and I thought I'd just continue this little off-topic rant for a bit, because I was flying over uh, the big island of Hawaii, and I was flying in a helicopter, I was flying over this uh, power plant, and it was an oil-fired uh, power plant, oil-powered um, electricity generating plant, and well, it got me thinking, why? And uh, it's, I was thinking that, well, Hawaii is ultimately screwed unless they change their ways. They're just going to run out, either run out of power or it's going to be so expensive they're going to be forced to change because Hawaii actually get 90%, uh, well the, the Hawaiian islands as a general group, get around 90% uh, of their power from fossil fuels. In this case about 70% uh, from oil or something like that and, uh, and uh, the rest of it comes from coal and there's a small amount of renewable power. And it, that just seemed crazy to me because I went to four different Hawaiian islands and all of them had an abundance, what seemed an abundance of wind energy, solar energy, geothermal energy and, and all sorts of things. And they just don't seem to be using it. It just seemed crazy to me. So I talked to a few locals about this and they were telling me all sorts of stories about how they don't want really, they don't really want renewable energy. They don't want change because they don't want wind power because the windmills just, you know, they don't want to ruin the, uh, the magnificent coastline and stuff they got. Well, it's crazy because I was, every island I went to, I drove around Here's a photo of, this isn't even the worst one, of these hideous cable TV power lines. Look at them. They're absolutely awful. We don't have anything that looks as nearly as hideous as this in Australia. I don't know the history of these cable TV um, uh, lines, but they put dedicated poles in and they string sometimes up to five or six different cables and they're huge, big, thick, black cables that stand out like a dog's hind leg. It's terrible. And, well, and for them to complain about wind power is, you know, having these big, majestic wind turbines is just crazy. And I actually, here's a photo of uh, an, an abandoned, um, it looked oh, 30 or 20, 30, 40 years old or something, wind uh, turbine generation facility that's just been abandoned. They had a smaller, um, more high-tech one close by, but even when they're rusting like that, I found them sort of majestic in a way. And, well, and I love wind turbines, so I don't know why they don't get behind it. Like, um, uh, hydropower and wind and solar and things like that, that com uh, countries like uh, New Zealand have done, who generate most of their, the majority of their power by renewable sources. So I've never seen something as ugly as these cable TV lines. I don't know, America must be, you Yanks must be obsessed with your cable TV because you just got so many of these big, thick, ugly lines. Ah, oh, man, did I get sick of it. These lovely Hawaiian islands ruined by these hideous cable TV lines. Now, the power lines weren't that bad because they're nice and thin. You can't see them on the, you know, they blend into the background. But these big, thick uh, cable lines, hideous. And the locals are complaining about putting up these majestic wind turbines to secure their, uh, you know, their energy future. It's crazy. Now, I did a quick check and I found that 
um, the Hawaiian government have actually um, done a memorandum of understanding with, uh, I don't know, the US uh, mainland or something like that, that they're actually going to try um, to increase their renewable, the percentage of power in renewable energy. There's a 20% target by 2020. Exactly, the, and pretty much the same as what we have here in Australia, but Australia is a big mainland cotton with lots of natural resources. So it's, it's not necessarily as important for us as it is for those little Hawaiian islands in the middle of the, the middle of the ocean. It's crazy. And uh, I don't know why they're not getting behind it. They really do. Because Hawaii is going to be screwed, mark my words, when the next oil crisis comes. And it's not that far around the corner because we're already at peak oil. And well, <laughs> they're in for a real big shock when it comes around again. And it appears that a Hawaiian government study has shown that uh, they can potentially generate at least 70% of their future power needs from renewable energy. Well, if you can do 70, I can tell you, you can do it almost all of it. So get onto it. What are you waiting for? And there's one other thing that's a bit off topic again, but it has to do with product design. And every time I go to the US, it was the same. I find it all through the US and I also found it in on, on the Hawaiian Islands as well. Is in the showers, in the bathrooms, they have these most convoluted taps and systems to, you know, a combined uh, bath and shower. And to get the shower to work, you've got to pull on some freaking knob or something on the bottom of the tap. You've got to hold it and turn the thing on at the same time. And it's just crazy. And there's no way to uh, get out a different uh, water pressure either. And you can't mix hot and cold. They've just got a single tap which mixes it and it doesn't, and you can't control the flow on half the things. It's just nuts. It's incredibly bad product design. I'm not sure if um, all Americans have these combined um, shower, tap, pool things, but all of them seem, uh, the next hotel I go to seems more convoluted than the last one in terms of just trying to get water out of the shower. And you can't regulate it, you can't regulate the temperature properly, it's nuts. Here in Australia, we have a hot and a cold tap. That's it. You turn on as much of the hot as you want. You turn on as much as the cold as you want. They mix together. It's lovely. You have full control. You can't get that with these stupid taps in America. I'm sick of it. It's just crap product design, really. Can somebody explain to me how it could be possibly be beneficial? Please, yanks out there, let me know.